what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel um, thank you for tuning in if you haven't already uh, if you're new to this channel if you would do me a favor go ahead drop down there hit that subscribe button uh, click on the bell so that way you get notified every time I do one of my videos or if I go live and do a, a giveaway of some kind uh, I believe it was last year I did a a giveaway from six gill it was a complete setup rod reel uh, I even installed their ceramic bearings uh, I cannot remember the winner of that giveaway but she hasn't reached back out to me to let me know how if she you know caught any fish with it I guess I need to I need to try to look her up and see if she's been able to catch any fish with that setup just one second guys Okay, uh, if y'all hear that noise in the background, uh, one of my uh, garbage trucks is coming through the area picking up garbage cans and stuff. But uh, I need to reach out to that person to see if she's caught any fish with that setup and how does she like that setup. Uh, for me, I love the six gill rod and reels. When I first saw their stuff, you know, I got a couple of them and I was just blown away. Now I think I have maybe 13, 14 of their setups. Uh, I am a member of their pro staff and their customer service is awesome. I've had one reel mess up on me since I've had their stuff and I was able to send it back in, got it fixed. They got it back to me pretty fast. So they're really good people. Uh, check them out at uh, six gill, uh, six gill fishing.com. Also subscribe to their uh, YouTube channel. Cause every time they come out with new products, they get out there and test it out to make sure that, they're putting out good product before you start buying but uh today's video uh i want to share some stuff some things that i've learned from watching some of the pros uh tournament fishing and stuff and how do they uh take care of their fish in tournaments especially during times like this um here in arkansas we've already had a couple of days where we've reached uh triple digit uh heat I mean, it's hot. Like right now, I'm sitting out here in the boat at the house, and I am sweating already. And I've only been out here maybe five minutes at the most, but I'm already sweating. So if you could imagine, you're out on the lake, it's hot. Uh, you know, you're catching fish out deep. That water's a little bit cooler, and then you put them in your live well, and that water is hot. So now you're probably having to. Uh, fizz the fish which that's something i'm still learning and once i get really good at that i haven't had to do it yet but once i learn more about that and get good at it then i will try to get a video for you guys to show you how to do that but right now i'm just going to focus on you caught you're catching the fish and then you're putting them in the live well what's one of the first steps you can do to ensure that you come back to the weigh-in with healthy fish so follow along with me Hopefully you guys will be able to keep up with this uh, since I don't have all the stuff and I'm not on the water to actually show you. But hopefully this will make sense to you guys. Okay, so first thing that I would do, and I've actually done this a few times. So what you'd want to do, stop at a gas station or somewhere and buy you some ice. Now, in my boat, I have two separate live wells. As you can see here, this is one live well, and then this is my other live well, port and starboard live wells, as you, if you will, for those of you that know anything about boats, um, left and right for those of you who don't want to get technical on the terms. But what I would do is I would buy two bags of ice, bag of ice for each live well, okay? Then um, I would put my fish additive or my live well additive into the live well and for me my choice is th marines g juice uh it's got the the man himself g man gerald swindle uh i love watching his videos check him out as well on his youtube channel he's always got some good information and he he breaks things down to where you can understand it a little bit easier but anyways uh you add your additive to that ice now um 
mine I do have the uh, recirculating pumps and right down here are my controls as you can see I have them set to empty so the live wells are open and then you have the fill and recirculate what that is for when you put it on one side uh, I think I actually had those backwards when I bought the pumps I bought them wrong because I didn't really know what I was getting I just saw where they said facing forward facing backward and all of that stuff and I really wasn't understanding what I was doing but they work anyways if you set it to fill that is where you're pumping the water from the lake into your live well when you set it to recirculate the water that's in your live wells you're running it through your aerator pumps and pumping it back into your uh, live wells so you're recirculating you're reusing that same water put the ice into the live wells first and then put your fish additive whatever you use if you use the uh the g juice rejuvenate uh there's a couple other uh fish additives out there on the market that you can get i've i've only used the g juice just because you know that was the first one that i bought i have heard that the other ones work perfectly fine as well so get whichever ones you want to get um normally i tell people on stuff like that get what you can afford you know depending on the size if the g juice costs more than the other ones then go with the other ones i mean there's nothing wrong with that but um uh put the ice in the live well and then put your fish additive in there whichever one you so choose okay what that's going to do is already you've got cold water in your live wells because that ice is going to melt it's already cold water now when you catch your first fish you turn your live wells on to start pumping that water in you're going to already start cooling that water off with that ice so that first fish that you catch and you're pumping water in there that fish has got some cool water already that's going to help calm the fish uh de-stress the fish from you fighting and stuff especially if you were catching them out deep and that's going to help calm the fish and they're going to be a little bit healthier uh the reason for all of that is because if you try to add ice to hot water you know as a little test go in your kitchen fill up a cup with some hot water and then put some ice cubes in there trying to cool it off and you'll see how fast that ice will melt and your your water is still hot it might have been warm but it's still hot and that's because you tried to add ice to hot water but if you were to take that water and add it to the ice first it's going to cool off a little bit quicker before you get a full uh live well full of hot water so you'll be able to maintain it a little bit easier another thing you can do I've got water bottles here that was in my cooler. I needed my cooler the other day for something else. And so I just took these water bottles out. But uh, you can take you uh, some old uh, two liter Coke bottles or something like that and put water in them and freeze them. Put those in your cooler. Of course, put your ice on top of them whenever you get out to the lake. That way you can take those bottles out, put those into the water to help keep it cool. That's going, like I said, it's going to help de-stress those fish and keep them healthy and bring them back to the uh, to the weigh-ins. And now you've got some good healthy fish. That way you're not getting fish penalties. The reason you want to do that is because if bass fishing is a sport for you, uh, like a lot of the professional guys, you get penalized when you come back to the weigh-ins with dead fish. So you want to do everything you can to take care of those fish to make sure they're healthy and alive when you come back to the weigh-ins and then they release them back to the lake so that way other people have a chance to catch those same fish. So I just wanted to share that because I have done that a few times in tournaments and even at the end of the day there's been a few tournaments where I didn't even get to pump water into the live wells because I didn't catch anything but there's been a few of them where the ice was still in there at the end of the day if I didn't pump water in there. But uh, I just thought I'd share that with you guys because, like I said, here in Arkansas, it's hot. Uh, I fished a tournament a few weeks back, and, I mean, it was so hot. We didn't even stay out there the full time. We ended the tournament around 11 o'clock because it was already, you know, reaching 100 degrees by. Okay, I am sorry about that. <laughs> my battery died on my camera. But as I was saying, it's hot, and if you're fishing in a tournament, then... You want to do everything you can to try to take care of your fish and get them back to the weigh-in. So that way you don't get any kind of fish penalties. So 
that's one of the things that I do is I will put a bag of ice and it doesn't have to be a very big bag of ice um, but I put a bag of ice in each live well and then that way whenever you uh, pump the water in you already got some nice cold water especially for those fish that are down deep you know you put them in hot water and it's probably going to stress them out plus the the fighting you know when you catch them it's going to put a lot of stress on them so you need to do everything you can to try to calm those fish and get them in a more healthier state while they're in the live well so next time you're out on the water fishing a tournament and it's hot like it is now um, try that uh, the best times to do that I would say uh, mid spring all the way through the summer probably going into for here in Arkansas uh, August September when it's still a little warm around here um, October you probably can just go back to just pumping in water and using whatever your uh, fish additive is in your live well without the ice um, I would probably still freeze the bottles and put those in there just to help cool it off you know if needed but I don't think you would need to buy ice to put in there you know around that October time frame but next time you're out fishing give that a try and see if that works for you and you know experiment with some other things too so that's all I've got for you guys thanks for watching again please hit the subscribe button smash that uh, thumbs up button if you like this video if you found it helpful smash the thumbs up button leave your comments let me know what you were thinking what you are thinking and if you have tried this uh, leave comments let me know how it worked for you or if you've come up with other methods that have worked please leave that down below in your comments as well and uh hopefully you guys enjoy your summer enjoy some good fishing see you guys next time in the great outdoors